welcome to chapter 10. So this first video goes over some things that you hopefully remember from sixth grade. So you are gonna have to fill these in on your um, note sheet. There are six different uh, statistics that we're gonna find in this section. So the first one is mean, then median, mode, and range. Okay, sometimes I abbreviate that MMMR for mean, median, mode, and range. Interquartile range, which you might abbreviate as IQR, but I want you to put the, the words there so you remember what that is. And mean absolute deviation, which we sometimes abbreviate MAD. So all of these are going to be in this kind of review, and they're all things we're going to come back to and be using in this chapter. Okay, so I want to start by just very quickly going over how we reduce a fraction or a ratio, because a lot of our probabilities that we come up with are going to need to be simplified, okay? So we've done this already this year. Uh, please fill in your directions here. To reduce a fraction or a ratio, we need to divide the numerator and the denominator by the GCF, right? And that GCF stands for greatest common factor. So you're thinking about the biggest number that goes into both the numerator, top number, and the denominator, okay? So there's a spot for you to write this example down. So if I was trying to simplify 16 over 24 as a ratio or a fraction, I would think, okay, what number is going to 16 and 24? And I realized I could divide them both by four, and that would give me four and six. Oh, so then I think, oh, well, I could still divide by something further, so I keep going until I can't divide anymore. So on the top here, I would get two and three, and now I realize that there's nothing else that goes into two and three, so I'm done, okay? I could have also maybe recognized divide by eight, divide by eight, to get right to my final answer. It doesn't matter if you do it in steps or all at once, but make sure it's simplified all the way, okay? So there are a couple for you to practice with. Pause it here and then simplify these real quick on your paper and then hit play when you're ready to check. Okay, so here's what I got for those answers. Take a minute to check them, pause if you need to. So we're going to have to be able to simplify all of our uh, probabilities in this chapter. Okay, moving on to vocabulary. First one is the mean or the average. Again, this is review of numbers or of terms you've probably already learned. But please write down the first one is the mean or the average. And to find that, we add up all the numbers in our list. And then take that answer and divide it. Right? Divide by how many numbers we have. So if you have six numbers in your list, you add those six numbers up and get a total, and then divide it by six. And that answer is your mean or your average, okay? I like to think of the mean or the average as like putting everything in a blender, blending it up, and then seeing what you would get once it's all mixed together. So this is my funny little thing to help me remember it. All right, median. The median is the middle number when you write them in order from least to greatest. Biggest problem with this one is that people will forget to put them in order from least to greatest and they just look at the list and pick the middle one without putting them in order, okay? So median means middle, right? The median of the highway is the, the middle of the highway. Okay, mode. Mode, M-O, is the most frequent or the most common number in your list. So it's the one that's repeated the most, okay? Um, or the one that appears most often in your list. And then range. I like to think of range as like the span, right? How big a range is there from the biggest to the smallest? How big is the span between the biggest and the smallest number? So you find the range by doing this, the, the biggest subtract, right? The biggest minus the smallest number to figure out the range of your data set. Pause if you need to go back and fill any of that in. So I want you to do these as examples. Now that we've gone over the definitions again, I have this data set. Right, you can see this list right here. Go ahead and I want you to calculate the mean, median, mode, and range, including all the numbers. Okay, so with all the numbers. And then I want to go over this term outlier. So there's one number here that is way outside of the rest of the numbers. Right, you probably noticed that one of them, the 
ding, ding, is way different than the rest. So that's called an outlier. So then I want you to practice it again, find the mean, median, mode, and range, when you don't add 47 into the list, right? Because that's your outlier. So if you take that number out completely, see what happens to your mean, median, mode, and range now, okay? So pause and then uh, hit play when you're ready to check. Okay, so the first thing I did was put them in order. So I know you can't see it all. Uh, there we go. Put them in order from least to greatest. Okay, then I got my mean by adding them all up and dividing by 10. I found the middle number, right? This would be the middle right there, so eight. The mode, most common, I had eight and nine, both repeated twice. And then the range, oops, I did that wrong. If I do count 47 here with my range, this should be 47 minus four, which is 43 switched okay and then check it here okay so now if I don't include 47 that changed my total here's my total and then divided by only nine numbers now I ended up with the same median in the same mode and then I had these flipped if I don't include 47 right when I take out the outlier now my range would only be from 11 to 4 so this is a range of seven. So the range gets significantly smaller when I don't include the outlier. Okay, so after this, we're expecting you can find the mean, median, mode, and range for any data set. Okay, so this isn't on your sheet. You don't have to write it down, but I just wanted to go over real quickly. If you have an even set of numbers in the list, right? So there's an even number, okay? If I'm going to find the middle now, I see that the middle for getting the median is in between these two numbers. Well, in order to get the median now, I'm going to have to take the average between 7 and 10. So I would do 7 plus 10 divided by 2 to get that average, and I get 8.5. Okay, so if you're finding that the middle between two numbers, take the average of those two. All right, what if I have more than one number that's listed multiple times, kind of like we did in our last example? You look for the one that's listed the most. So it looks like here I have sixes and eights. So those would both be my mode. Okay, you can have more than one mode if they're repeated equal amounts of time. All right, again, this is nothing you need to write down, but I just want to go over that you should have learned about stem and leaf plots before, um, line plots before. Right? So your data set could look like any of these things. Um, so if you remember, this is like 42 and 67 and 73 and 78. Those would be the numbers in your list, and you could still find the mean, median, mode, and range from those. Or your list might be 8, 9, 9, 10, 10, 10, 11, 11. Right? You could have your list in different formats and still find these things. Okay, this is another one that hopefully you've seen before. This is called a box and whisker plot. So this box and whisker plot tells us a few things, okay? Notice it's on top of a number line, right? Here's my number line. It has a box part and it has whiskers. So I want you to write these things down on your paper. Q1, quartile one. The Q stands for quartile. Quartile one. So that's the middle of the lower half. Q2, or quartile 2, is the median, or the very middle. Q3 is the middle of the upper half of data. You're writing this down on your paper. And then IQR stands for interquartile range. Okay? And that is Q3 minus Q1. That's how we find it. So you're going to want to write that down, and then we'll do an example, okay? So here is a picture of a box and whisker plot. Pause if you still need to fill any of this in. Okay, so there's things that you're going to add to your paper, right? So in my box and whisker plot, the very lowest value, or what we call the minimum, is right here at this tip of this whisker, okay? All right. Then this part of the line 
shows um, right here is Q1, quartile one, right? The lower quartile is right here. Okay, then we have the median, which is also Q2. We don't really call it Q2. We just use the word median there for the exact middle of my data. Okay, then I have Q3, right, where the box ends. And then this last whisker, and over here, this would be the maximum or the biggest number in my data set. Okay? So it's broken down so that 25% of your numbers are in this whisker, 25% of your numbers are in this half of the box, 25% of your numbers are in this half of the box, and the last 25% are in that whisker. Okay? All right, and then this whole box, right, from Q1 to Q3, is the IQR, okay? So I know this all seems like a lot of mumbo jumbo. We're gonna, we're gonna do an example together, okay? And then we'll be practicing it more in class. So here's my example, okay? It says make a box and whisker plot. Cool, so first thing is to put the numbers in order from least to greatest. So go ahead and do that on your paper. Pause if you need to. I have them in order here. Then I just need to find Q1, the median, or Q2, Q3, okay? And then I'll be able to finish my box and whisker plot. So once they're in order, I'm going to find the middle. Let's see, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it looks like there's my middle, right? This is my median for Q2, the very middle of my data set. So if I have a number line that goes, it looks like it needs to go from about 0 to 15, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there we go. So the very middle is the median at 8, okay, there's 8. Uh, then the middle of this half would be right in the middle between here, so three and a half would be Q3. So let me find that on my number line. So here's Q3 at three and a half. And the middle of this set of data would be right between nine and 12, which is 11 and a half. Nope, sorry, 10 and a half. So right here. Okay. So I know where my box is. From Q1 to Q3, that's my box. And then I have a whisker down to one and a whisker up to my highest value of 14. Okay? So Q, oops, sorry, this is Q1. That's labeled wrong. This is Q3. And this is my median. So that's a quick example, okay, of a box and whisker plot. I want you to have gone through it here once, but then we'll do more um, together in class. Okay, go ahead and pause and find Q1, Q2, Q3, and IQR for this set. Okay, so I put these numbers in order. Okay, I found the exact middle was right here, so I had to find the average between these two to get my median. Okay, then the middle of this bottom set is Q1. The middle of the upper half is Q3. Okay. And then to get IQR, it's Q3 minus Q1. So 62 minus 48 gave me 14. Okay? All right, so I don't want to run out of time for the mean absolute deviation, which is coming next. So separate video, but keep going. You are not done yet. You need to click on the next link for part B, okay? And we'll finish up with the MAD.